I went to Berkeley to visit my best friend, and in California, I met an Egyptian man, and we fell into a passionate affair. His mother wrote him letters all the time, and I always asked him to translate those letters for me. She was very intelligent and full of feeling, and I fell in love with her more than with him. We carried on for a while there, and then I realized I needed to go home to New York and uh, to start writing. I had already been writing like a piece a year for the Village Voice, but then from out of nowhere, an, ed an editor approached a woman who wanted to be my agent. It was so bizarre. And she said, would she consider going to the Middle East? And I remembered this man and his mother and those letters. And I suddenly I said, no, not the Middle East, but Egypt. I'd love to go to Egypt and write about middle-class Kyrenes as if they were human. <laughs> So I went to Egypt and this family, this huge family, embraced me instantly and I spent six months there. The first description I wrote was of the streets of Cairo. Cairo was filled with cafes, filled with men, not a woman in sight. I never felt endangered, but I was definitely an oddity on the street and the traffic would be cars zipping at crazy speeds, and then all of a sudden it would be a camel, I mean, it, or a donkey, or people, you know, pulling animals, and it would terrify me. For six weeks I, was, I would go all around rather than cross, and finally I said to myself, you are a fucking New Yorker, get out there. <laughs> and I did. I took notes constantly. I, I just, I walked around the streets and took notes, and of course I took notes on everybody that I'd ever met. What I found among them was, from this littlest child to the oldest grandfather, everyone had the gifts of a novelist's observation, the ability to observe. And since family life was predominant, all they did was observe each other. Once a man came into my apartment, and what I had done was begin the habit of of writing notes on long legal pads, and, and each person had their own strip, which I would add to continuously, and I hung them all up on the wall. And this guy comes in, he was a journalist himself, and he looks around and he turns to me and he says, CIA? <laughs> Why you take notes on everyone? <laughs> the thing that, that Egypt made me see more than anything, here I was, Jewish, a girl, an American, but what I really was was American. Those other elements of identity really didn't, didn't matter here. What mattered was my sense of individuation against their sense of the groupness of life, of family life. When I got home, so I had this whole cast of characters, and then what do you do with them, you know? I didn't know how to write a book. It was the first book. I didn't, I didn't know what to do, really. This book is written as though somebody is uh, pitched on a high <laughs> that never comes down. You know, I was just plunged into it, and I didn't know how to step back and make larger sense of what I was watching. All I knew how to do was describe. And in the, in the course of writing the book, the publishing house failed. It was a book that lost its way uh, six times over. Um, nobody was taking care of it. Um, it was a miracle that it, it was a miracle that it got published and it was a, really a miracle that it got nominated for the National Book Award. Got good reviews, got attention. And then I went back to the desk. <laughs> then I went back to, to life as it was, but it was very, very thrilling. It really felt, uh, wow, I wrote a book. The man who was the source of it, Ali Mahmoud, not his real name, he contacted me after the book was published, and he told me that it, one of the uncles called him and said to him, in Arabic, of course, who is this Jewish fox that you have sent to eat of our vitals? And I said, well, how do you feel about it? And there was a long silence, and he said, you are fair. You are fair. The book taught me, though, who I was, because people I knew who were journalists 
real journalists. <laughs> they read it and said, well, where's the politics? Where's the economics? Where's, you know, where's the journal? Where's the hard stuff? And there was nothing like that in there. And so it began to teach me what I was capable of doing and what, and what, and what I would ultimately do, which was to use myself to see the world. The life we lead as this kind of writer is awful. I mean, it's boring, tedious, lonely. Then you have to sit down every day and reinvent yourself. You have to, every day you got to, got to sit down and drag it out of yourself. But <laughs> when it's working, there's nothing in the world that compares. And I do feel that. <laughs>